Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is one of my favorite games of all time. It's the perfect adaptation of the traditional Mario RPG formula and improves most aspects from Paper Mario 64. Even though it is a great game, that doesn't mean there aren't any problems with it. After all, no game is truly perfect. So in this video, I will be going through some improvements I would want Nintendo to make if they were to remaster or remake this game. Some are various quality of life upgrades, while others improve the core design overall. So without further ado, let's improve Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. By far, the most criticism I've seen regarding Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is related one way or another to backtracking. If you haven't heard of the term before, backtracking is when the player has to go to one location and then travel back to the location they were before. In TTYD, there are multiple story missions where the player has to travel back and forth between locations, which can definitely be a chore for some people. Some specific places that people note are Chapter 4 between Twilight Town and Creepy Steeple, Chapter 5 between Keel Hall Key Settlement and Pirate's Grotto, and the entire General White mission in Chapter 7, which is pretty annoying. A solution I have to this flaw is a limited travel system which would utilize the world map Basically, at a certain location in a chapter, you could use the magical map to travel to another location. This would kind of work similarly to Sensor Labs and Origami King, along with the world map and color splash, and this system wouldn't be as flexible as fast travel systems in games like Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild, since it would remove a bit of the challenge from the game. For faster movement in general, they could also bring back the spin dash from Paper Mario 64, which would make overworld traversal feel more fluid, and overall this would mitigate a lot of the problems that people had with backtracking in the Thousand Year Door, and would make the areas of the game feel more connected. This next improvement isn't as significant, but it would definitely be helpful during a normal playthrough. Oftentimes, in TTYD, I run out of items or am forced to throw out a useful item for a slightly more useful item. In the game, there are only 10 storage slots, so you can only have a somewhat limited selection. An increase in storage throughout the game would definitely be helpful for the inventory system while not making things too overwhelming at the start of the game. My idea is a Shaman and Rogue port that charges 20 coins for a new inventory slot and doubles the price each time you come back. This system would be very similar to Pokemon Legends Arceus, since in that game there is a merchant that increases your inventory space while also increasing the price each time. On the topic of Pokemon Legends Arceus, we might as well include a storage system for extra items that can be accessed in various locations. While features improving inventory aren't entirely necessary, it would be a nice quality of life improvement. While TTYD definitely has a lot of content in the main game and extras like the Pit of 100 Trials, the side quests are very lackluster. A lot of the time, side missions feel way too lengthy or even pointless at times. There's one mission where you have to give a hot dog, which heals 20 HP, and a moose cake made by Zestees, and you give it to a Bubbulb for a single dried bouquet, which only heals 1 HP. The side quests feel like an afterthought, and the only reason to do some of them is for completion purposes to 100% the game. I feel like this system should be completely overhauled and replaced with a more functional and accessible side quest system. Instead of unlocking missions after beating chapters, you can talk directly to NPCs to start the mission, like in most RPGs. The side quests would also be, have more fitting rewards for their difficulty, and th there would also be new ones to increase replayability. Instead of having to visit the Trouble Center, you can manage side quests from a menu, and the new purpose of the Trouble Center would be for collecting rewards or directly starting missions you previously denied when talking to an NPC. The partner system in Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door is great. Each partner has HP, which is an upgrade from 64, and you can gain new moves throughout the game. However, upgrading partners is a bit weird compared to how you upgrade other stats in the game. Instead of upgrading partners traditionally, you have to find shine sprites hidden throughout the overworld. This system works fairly well, and it is a nice collectible, but I think partners leveling up should be more closely linked with the gameplay. 
My solution to this is for partners to gain their own XP during battle, and basically, the partners who pr participate in battle will get most of the EXP, while the rest will get a small percentage. When the partners level up, their HP and attack power will increase, and the leveling cap will be higher than it is in the original game. With this system, partners would still need Shine Sprites to obtain new moves, but they can only obtain them at certain levels. As a bonus, it would be nice to see partners getting extra moves in a remake or remaster, but it's not really necessary. Overall, partners getting their own EXP would definitely improve the progression of the game. Anyways, those are some of the ways I would improve Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door if it got a remake or remaster. While it is my favorite Paper Mario game, and one of my favorite games of all time, like all games, it isn't perfect, and there are definitely some ways it can improve. What are some improvements you would like to see in a remake or remaster of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, thank you guys for watching this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.